What's going on guys? T90XVI with the WSVG Championships and uh, currently the score in this series is 1-1 one one, and Kangensade versus DNZ Daujic and they were good games. The first one was on Dry Arabia which was taken by DNZ. Uh, that was a Huns mirrored matchup and then the second game was on Double Arabia which was taken by Kangensade and uh, so this is for all the money right here and um, so this is map is called rooster and this was in pretty much every round of three that was played and it's a WSVG map so let's just quickly introduce the yeah. players and get things yeah. underway we have condensate here in the green playing as the Vikings and over here in the blue we have playing in the as the Vikings DNZ Dowgic so um, here's the thing just taking a look at the map, I mean, it is in a giant horseshoe, pretty much. Um, this is the only crossing over to the enemy by land. So, water control is pretty much going to be the most important thing here. Even the wall here would be really simple. So, walling here wouldn't re really be common. Um, because if you do wall here, what you'll probably see is a bust through that wall. And then you're going to have the wall behind here anyway, back here. By the time they get eh, maybe about here, you've walled here. You know what I mean? So walling here isn't going to be common. You probably won't see a wall at all because these players know that water control is important. They're going to go for the water. So one thing, just take a look at the maps. Uh, Kangensade, well, luckily his deer are warable um, because over here you'll see the deer for DNZ are quite easily warable. But over here, the wood lines aren't really the best for him. And, and that's unfortunate. He could have gone here. I think that would have been a better choice. But later on, his gold and his lumber camp, they're going to be kind of running into each other. But um, with water maps, you're going to see guys go up on rather early, around 25, 27 population, and try and get out the optimal four fishing ships. Then at that point, they'll pretty much abandon all of the land food sources like farms and mills and um, you know on berries and deer and things like that they pretty much abandon that and what they will do is attempt to win the water those four fishing ships should bring in enough food to keep their TC going and that's kind of how it goes they will have everything on wood and gold so it'll be a water match uh, a water match up here and we'll see what happens. It's all about winning that water. And the uh, thing about these newer maps, these newer water hybrid maps, is that the water is, or the fish is evenly spread out. You know, so uh, the fish are fair, which is nice. Usually you'll see like a clump of 18 fish here, and then like one over here. And it's not fair. But here it's evenly spread out throughout the map, and it is very fair. And you could even fish in the back if you really needed to. And the cool part, the cool part about this water being in the back is that if you really wanted to stay in the game and you didn't want to GG out, let's say this is in the final final rounds of this tournament, you could rebuild your docks on the back and come come back. You know, you could come back onto the water. Now that's a heck of a task to do. It's not often that someone can rebuild all of their galleys and come back onto the water without being landed and being killed. However, it can happen. So, 23 population going up is Kongensade. DNZ is going up on 23 population as well. DNZ is getting out his fourth fishing, fishing ship. And over here, Kongensade, he's not yet getting his fourth one out. Uh, he does have some sheep underneath the TC. He does have some boar underneath the TC he could use. But he's going to want to get out a second dock. I'm not seeing a second dock yet, which is surprising. From any of these guys uh, you would think a second dock would be prioritized it's not happening just yet uh, but so far there it is there's second dock and uh, they probably you know what seeing as I'm the noob compared to these guys they're probably timing that dock so it'll be up right when they hit and a little bit late for DNZ there but they're gonna be getting galleys out of those any minute now so Three docks coming up for Kongensade, and like I said, 
they're gonna want all everything on the wood, everything on the gold. A house for Kangensade, which isn't good, but he does have galley skewed up on every dock he has. Third dock coming up for DNZ as well, and we are going to see a galley war, ladies and gentlemen, and should be good, should be good. However, I'm interested to see what three fishing ships means to DNZ. Uh, to Kangensade, as opposed to 4 for DNZ. I'm really interested to see what the difference comes out to in the later game, once they run out of food and everything. So, um, 2v1 galley over here, and the production is... I mean, DNZ got up first, so he's gonna, he's gonna have a higher production level. Villager coming over to repair this, and well played there, uh, that's for sure. Villager's coming over to save that galley. And uh, not seeing any of the other galleys come out, and the fishing ships are going to go down. And um, at this point, he has his galleys out, and he should be able to save these fishing ships. Going to get a fourth dock out, and that's interesting because Kangensade, not only does he not have enough food to keep his town center running, but he doesn't have enough wood to keep these galleys out of every you know, coming out of every dock. So, I'm not sure why he's choosing to get a fourth dock out. I think over here, if you look at DNZ, he has a lot more wood, and he does. He's even getting the blacksmith up. I feel like DNZ has the better build here. We'll see what happens. So, I'm gonna look for a micro, for the micro king over here. Five to four. So, Kangen Sage really gonna have to make his shots count. Just taking a look at the HP. Well, pretty low on a couple of these guys for both of them. And um, both going up to four docks, but plus one's going to be coming in shortly for DNZ, that's for sure. In fact, he doesn't yet have his blacksmith up. There we go. And he'll be getting that shortly. So, pushing out across the map is Kangensade, but Kangensade is really outmatched with the galleys here. If you're repairing your ships, that is not a good sign at all. In fact, that's a horrible sign because your villager isn't able to collect wood you need to make more ships. And so, it's not looking good at this time. Um, plus one's already in, or on its way in, and we have no blacksmith for Kangensade. No blacksmith, but superior in numbers at this time. But, Galleys are going to go down just a little bit quicker for Kangensade right now. Kangensade, though, taking out a galley, which was a huge shot there. And we'll see what happens here. These guys are microing it out at this point in time. Kangensade seems to really be holding in here. I'm very surprised that he was able to do that. In fact, he's getting some critical hits. Really getting some critical hits on the galleys of PNZ right now. However, we are seeing the constant production of villagers on DNZ's side because he has the extra fishing ships. That is huge. It really is huge. He has the almost 200 food at this point, while over on this side, Kangensade, he does not have any food to make a villager right now, and he is also housed. So let's take a look at the counts right now. Well, military, they're almost tied up. One more for DNZ. Villagers, though, DNZ has three more villagers, and now a fishing ship down again for Kangensade. So it looks like DNZ is really pushing the aggression here. And a bit of poor micro there from DNZ, really going the wrong direction and losing two now galleys, soon to be three, it looked like there. I thought I almost called it three, but didn't quite lose it and uh, both gonna have one down there it looks like but no not the case and we're gonna see who comes out on this one it looks like they're pretty similar skilled with the micro and they are tied right now they both have 15 ships out on the map and so we'll see what happens I, I just really feel like that early this early fishing ship will, fishing ship loss for Kangensade is really going to hold him back. And losing two galleys there right away when he engages in the middle of the map. The water control is firmly in DNZ's favor at this point. 
And if Condensate keeps pushing this, he very well may lose his army. Uh, he is going to go and get the fishing ship, so that was a huge loss. I've been speaking about those fishing ships the entire game. Huge loss to lose those two fishing ships. He's going to have those fishing ships not bringing in food now. These guys are on a couple farms, but man, was that a huge loss. And let's compare the resources right now for these guys and see where they're going. Um, currently, we have Kangensade. He's getting up a market right now, but he does have enough to keep galleys producing from all of these docks. So, well played from him. Over on the other side, we have DNZ. And DNZ, well, he has a couple idle docks, which is a problem, but he is on his way to Castle Age. So, that is a good thing. All he needs to do is hold over here, and he's fine. And, um... Whew, that could be the game, honestly. If, if he doesn't lose a critical amount of these ships, he does not want to engage. He does not want to lose any ships. If he does lose these ships, he's going to be in trouble um, because then he's not going to be able to upgrade anything. So he should be fine, though. He's almost halfway to Castle Age right now. And I assume, just looking at the score... Yeah, Condensate has to know he clicked up at this point. And Condensate is really pushing in, trying to take out as many ships as he can. And he's losing just as many as he's taking out. So Condensate really is not worth the push right now for you, my friend. He is losing just as many, if not more, than he's taking out right now. And at this point, you might want to build some docks elsewhere if you're Condensate or get up yourself quickly and he is not even close in fact looking at the count we have military count only two ahead for Condensate, and that is going to be swayed quickly into dnc's favor once he hits the castle age and gets the war galley and plus two as well um the galleys are still coming out though looks like he's going to click up just in a moment here and he needs that food Remember, he only has one fishing ship. He only has these guys on berries. He only has one farmer. He cannot get the food right now. And he needs five food. He can't buy it because he needs that gold. And he's up now. Now at this point, DNZ is about to hit. So what do you do if you're in Condensate's shoes? Um, you're similar on the military count. You have both have 23 ships but you know that the enemy is going to be coming around and destroying your docks. So, you have to flee, really. This is a good move to try and come in because you know he's going to be on the front. However, you have to flee, and you can't lose your ships. And that's really important. At this point, you can't be caught out. And if you're caught out, the game can be over quickly. And the upgrade's going to be coming in for War Galley. We have plus two coming in first, and now is where things can be really, really dicey. Things can be really, really dicey, and Condensate, it's not looking good for Condensate right now. Condensate, you are going to need to flee, and flee he will. Um, luckily, the speed of the galleys are a little ahead of the war galleys. So he will be able to flee, which is good, but looking at his time, he's still not there yet. He still has some galleys. He's gonna need to be able, he's gonna need to have the resources to get galley, uh, war galley, and plus two. So his docks are going to be, need to be, to have a lot of uh, galleys to be able to push these guys off of here. Uh, but he's gonna be chased down, and we'll see what happens here. Would be interesting if he could pull this one off, though. Looking at the scores, Conlon's not too far behind. And um, we'll see if he's going to get the upgrade in immediately. Uh, War, War Galley's coming in, as you can see there on that one dock. And he's just going to flee. And once he gets that, once he gets what he needs, he'll be fine. Uh, these docks aren't going to go down all that quickly. And um, these. These galleys, though, need to pull. 
pull back and he does the 11 taunt because he didn't realize but uh bob canero coming in as well and he's just gonna run the whole way around it looks like he's gonna have to go the whole way around the map to get back into the center but we'll see what happens um he may be able to turn this one around it looks like looking at the populations again we have 29 military for Kongensate and 27 for DNZ, but DNZ has the extra population. Um, over here, looks like these guys are going to be patrolled in. And if they're patrolled in, it's not going to be good for Kongensate. However, Kongensate is not really sure of the amount compared to DNZs, so he's kind of taking a risk there. But the middle has been won. The middle has been won back, and that's that's huge. Uh, I feel like DNZ's biggest mistake was to go to two TC because now he's out been outproduced with military, and he has men on his he has war galleys on his gold right now, and nothing can address the situation. Nothing can address the situation. In fact, his only other gold is over here. And that's going to take a lot of time to get over there. We have one, two, three villagers down. And he does have a gold over there, excuse me. But he's giving he's giving Kangensei the amount of time to get back on the water because he's putting a lot of resources into two town centers. DNZ, I feel like that was a mistake. But over here, still, he does have a critical amount of units here. Kangensei's units are spread up split up and they're split up across the map so that's going to be a problem i don't feel like this engagement will be the best for condensate and looks like they both are aware of that and dnz is approaching and chasing down while condensate is pulling back and you know they both seem to be aware of what's going on in the middle right now but still nothing is really addressing these galleys back here and these war galleys could really really do some damage if they came in on the back side and I'm interested to see if they're going to do that because if Kangensei loses this group of units it's over this is going to be able to turn the tides of anything so he needs these guys this is about four eight twelve about 15 units right there that he needs out in the middle of the map and um at this point, 1TC still is Kangensate. Again, I feel like that was the appropriate move. And we have 2TC for DNZ. And unfortunately, right now, Kangensate looks like he's going to get caught out. And he's going to patrol these guys in. At the same time, though, we have a push across. And Kangensate could take out a couple docks here. Um, even stop a TC from going up. Um, or stop a um, TC from producing over here and if you were to take out a dock or two that'd be really helpful but it looks like DNZ he's gonna come on right back so DNZ is gonna make his way over and they're just playing a cat and mouse game right now with each other really um, they kind of know what's going on uh, do we have a university up for any of these guys that do so I assume ballistics is in uh, ballistics is really important and this is the moment that I was referring to. This is the moment when this army comes back out into the middle and can turn the tide of the battle. We have a huge, huge play out in the middle from Kongensade. Kongensade needs to engage with these units. I feel like even if he doesn't, he might be able to get this. And... DNZ hasn't clicked up. He hasn't done anything. I'm not sure why he doesn't have the amount of units he needs. But this this really, with the amount of units coming out from Kongensate right now, he should be able to take this. And the fact that these units are coming in from the, from all angles right now is really causing problems. And um, this is going to decide the game right now, for sure. The scores are 200 a piece, um, 200 apart, and pulling back right now is DNZ, and I feel like that's a good, good choice. Um, he needs to, he needs to garrison his galleys and send them out one by one. 
but uh, right now these docks are sending more galleys across for Condensate. Condensate is doing a great job. They're all level on upgrades, of course. And it's hard to call. It's really hard to call. You know, at this point, they're just queuing up units and just praying they'll have the production, but Kangensaid pulls it out. He pulls it out, and well played. That was a fun one to watch. And here's the thing, guys. Let's look at the villager counts real quick. Um, DNZ has more villagers right now. He has 10 more villagers, but his military is down 15. And if you... All that food he put into, all the resources he put into the TC, you know, making the TC, keeping the TC active, he could have put into building docks, could have put into upgrading his units, and he didn't do that. And not only was that a mistake, it was a huge mistake because he hit Castle H first. He should have taken that aggression further with 1TC and pushing everything he had because he hit the Castle Age first. But he didn't do that. He sat back, he went to 2TC, and he allowed Condensate to then push him right back on 1TC. You'll rarely see people go to multiple TCs on 1v1 water maps. So I was very surprised DNZ did that, and he lost the game. And I felt like it was a good game. Uh, it was well played, and... I was a little lucky that Kong and Sade got back here and ended up getting some villager picks just by chance because he was running away. But uh, it was well played, and I enjoyed that one. So that means Kong and Sade took this series and moves on. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show every game from every series. Uh, I'll probably be showing one from here or there. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and T90XVI.